So now in this video we're going to make a DIY boost converter. So this one is uh, really a demonstration circuit. There's boost converter modules. They uh, boost the uh, voltage. You get a higher voltage out than you put in. There's modules that they make that are a lot more efficient than this. That do a lot better. But uh, this should hopefully uh, give you a great idea of what a boost converter does. So the secret is the inductor. So we switch the inductor on and off. And the reason why we do that is inductors have the basic electrical property of not changing how much current is flowing through them instantly. It takes time for current to increase or decrease. So it's relatively quick, but uh, there's still a period of time that it takes for it to change. So what we're going to do, we have a capacitor here. We can charge it up to 7.5 volts because the Zener down here will start letting current flow through it as needed to prevent the voltage from rising above that. The inductor. To begin with, we uh, will apply power and the capacitor is going to charge about uh, 4.5 volts approximately because it's going through a rectifier diode and that's going to drop about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts approximately. Now we have 220 ohm resistors here. That's as low as I want to go with a 5 volt power supply. But we put them in parallel. So we have uh, three current paths that are equal right there, 220 ohms. And uh, the current's going to flow through each one of them basically as if the other ones don't exist. So we'll have about three times the current. We have an equivalent of about 73 ohms of resistance. My 10 millihenry inductor has about 25 ohms of resistance. We'll have about 100 ohms of resistance total when the switch is closed. And uh, 5 volts. So about 50 milliamps of current flowing through them. A fair amount of current. Now, when we release the switch, the inductor does not stop conducting uh, right away. There's a brief period of time current keeps flowing through. So it is pretty quick, relatively speaking, but for a brief period of time current keeps flowing. Now we open the switch. If we did not have another current path, we'd see a spark at the switch, but we do have another current path. Now the current can go through the rectifier down and uh, into the capacitor. The more current you pump into a capacitor, the higher its voltage. It doesn't matter if it's higher than the supply voltage, as long as you force current into it, which the inductor will do, the voltage goes up until we hit 7.5 volts and uh, the zener down keeps it from going up anymore. So that's really all there is to it. We'll use an oscilloscope to look at that voltage there. And so if I stop pressing the button, the uh, voltage is going to slowly go down over time. There's a little leakage through the capacitor and the oscilloscope. But for the most part, every time you release that, you'll get a bump in voltage. And for the most part, it's going to hold that. And here we are on the uh, breadboard. We have the three resistors, 220 ohms, to the positive supply. And then they come to that row there, which is where the uh, top pin there of the inductor is. The uh, bottom pin in the inductor is to the top of the switch. So a 10 millihenry inductor. And the top of the switch is always connected. So this is always connected to the anode of that rectifier dot. It's separated top to bottom. When I press the button, the top of the switch will connect to the bottom of the switch. That goes to ground. So I got the rectifier dial there. Current can flow that way, but not that way. So it can charge up the uh, capacitor. And we got the uh, positive side there. And the negative side, there's a dash 10 micro farad capacitor, as we saw before. Once it gets up to 7.5 volts, we have this reverse bias zener diode rated for 7.5 volts. So it'll start conducting as needed to prevent it from going up any higher. We covered all that before, so now we will just get to the testing. So the uh, supply is set to 5 volts right there, but we can also quickly take a look at it with this. So the uh, end of the oscilloscope cable comes to alligator clips. I just clip them to jumpers so I can move them easily and we'll get the supply voltage 5 volts. We're up uh, 5 squares and each square is 1 volt. Now we'll go to the capacitor and we'll probably see something interesting. So you can see we were at 5 volts but it dipped down a little bit. So the capacitor did get up to 5 volts. That's because a little bit of current could still leak uh, through the uh, diode and uh, but with the oscilloscope there enough currents going through the oscilloscope now where that leakage through the diode is lower. So now we did get that uh, about half of a volt that uh, the rectifier diode needs to start conducting. Here's the uh, main thing though. We keep hitting the button. Don't have to hit it uh, terribly often. A little more when we get a 
a bigger voltage difference. In any case, now we're up, there's eight squares there, to about 7.5 volts, as uh, we said there would be. Now, we'll look at the uh, power supply. As I said before, the uh, three parallel resistors have equivalent to about 73 ohms. I'll just say 75 to make the math easy. And the inductor, I tested it with my LCR meter earlier, about 25. And so, whenever I hold the button, we get up to about uh, 50 milliamps of current right there, as I said before. So, that's really it. The main thing was that we were able to uh, get that boosted voltage really easily. Again, there's modules that do a much better job, and they don't cost that much. You know, probably not much more than the components. And uh, so, just get a module. But uh, in any case, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate Patreon if you can. I got links down in the description. And uh, that'll help out a ton. Just watching videos, though, helps out a ton. So thanks to everybody that does that. I'll see you in the next video.